Hello Internet and welcome back to my tutorial series for Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead. Now today we will be talking about the game launcher, going over its functionality and telling you some things that you really, really need to avoid. We talked about the launcher in my video about obtaining the game. I would refer you to that if you don't really know what I'm talking about. Uh, but a brief recap is that the launcher is only available for Windows users and is a third party program. It's mostly valuable for people who update the game pretty frequently, i.e. people who play experimental. Again, this launcher is not distributed by the dev team, someone else has made it, so it's up to you whether or not you want to use it. Now, I personally do use the launcher, as does a decent percentage of the game's player base. I've never had issues with it personally, but I do want to stress that I'm in no way vouching for it or affiliated with the creator. Alrighty, but if you're watching this, you probably have already decided to use the launcher, so let's dive into it. You can obtain the launcher from Remy Roy's GitHub page, which I will link in the description down below. The easiest way to do this is to scroll down, download the Windows installer, and then install it. You probably understand how to install a straightforward program like this, and if you don't, well, I probably can't help you. You're beyond help. Uh, but in all seriousness, just follow the instructions, you'll be fine. Now, I've had issues with the launcher not recognizing where I've installed Cataclysm. I recommend that you install both the launcher and the game to your main C or D drive. Do not bury it in program files or anything like that. Depending on your version of Windows, this may cause you to have trouble getting things to run. If it's in multiple subfolders, just make a folder in your main drive directory and install it there. To install Cataclysm through the launcher, you will choose your directory in the main tab, select the version you want in the middle section, and then click the big install game button at the bottom of the window. It's a pretty straightforward process, but it may take a bit depending on your computer and your internet connection. We will talk about all these panels in more detail here in a moment, but that is the gist of how to install the game. Alrighty, so let's talk about the main page of the launcher. Now I'm recording this video in mid-2021, and the launcher looks a little bit different than it did a while back. It's possible that some of this will be fixed or changed in the future. Don't be concerned if yours looks a little bit different from how mine does. First, we have the tab headings. We'll go over each of these in the video, but we'll start here in main. First, we can see our directory. This is where the launcher has or will install Cataclysm. This is useful for if you ever need to access game files, but you forget where you installed the game. It also lets you install multiple versions of Cataclysm into different folders if that's something you want. Clicking the three dots will allow you to change this directory. If you change the directory to a location without a game installation, or you've just started the launcher for the first time, you'll see a small yellow triangle warning you that there is no game installed in that location. The big button at the bottom will say install game instead of where it normally will say update game and your version, build, and saves will not exist so the launcher will just say unknown. Now we have the version line. For some reason on my current installation, the launcher doesn't know what version I'm on so just go ahead and ignore that. This is auto pulled from the game and you have no control over what is displayed here. Next we have build. This will display which build of the game is currently installed. It will also say when you last updated the game. This is handy for when you're ready to update, but you're not really 100% sure which version you should update to. Next, we have saves. This will display how many worlds and characters you have in your save directory. It will also tell you how much drive space those saves occupy. Saves in Cataclysm can be pretty massive depending on how many characters you're running and how much of the world they have explored. If you play the same character for several in-game years, which most people never get that far, then your save can get pretty pretty substantial. Also, if you don't reset your worlds between characters, you can end up with a very, very large save file. You may want to manage disk space at some point in the future, so it's nice to be able to see at a glance how much space you're using here. Next, we have a big launch game button, assuming that the game is actually installed in this directory. This, of course, will launch the game. We also have the restore previous version button. If you update the game and then find that you're having issues, you can click this button to revert back to the last installed version. I don't really like that it's right next to the launch button. I've definitely clicked this by mistake, but whatever. In the middle section, we have information for updating and installing the game. You can select either stable or experimental and then select your platform underneath. Below that is a drop down menu where you can select your build. It will also give you a time frame for when that selected version was made available for download so you can get an idea of how recent it is. There's also a find build text box here that you can search for a specific build if it does not appear in the drop down menu. Now I've never used this, not really sure how it works, I couldn't get it to do anything when I was testing this out, but I've also been playing the game with the launcher for years and I've never ever used this feature so you probably don't need to worry about it too much. 
Below that, you will see a change log. Now in the before times, this would display a list of recent changes made to the game. Unfortunately, over the last few months, some things have been changing behind the scenes and it can no longer pull that information. This means that for experimental, change logs are no longer displayed. This may be fixed in the future, I'm hoping that it will, but for now, there are no change logs. If, however, you select a stable version from the update section, it will display the change log for the last stable. But again, this only applies to stable. Also, understand that anything displayed here is not all-inclusive. There are many, many, many changes made to the game on a daily and weekly basis, and displaying them all would lead to very, very long lists. Even the stable updates usually have more than what is displayed here. Now at the bottom of the screen is a giant button that either says update or install game depending on what is in your directory currently. Once you've selected a build, you can click this button to install or update. In general, the launcher makes updating a simple process so you don't really need to worry about transferring folders manually or anything like that. Updating is usually a smooth process and if anything goes wrong, you can use the restore previous version button that we talked about previously. If you're overly concerned, you can back up your saves before updating, and we will talk about how to do that in the next tab. Also, if I understand correctly, the launcher deposits deleted files into your recycling bin. This is handy if you need to go in and restore some things manually. Just be aware that if you delete the files from the recycle bin, you may not be able to restore it when you need to. Anyway, the main tab is the tab that you will use the most frequently, but let's move on to the next one. Here is the backups tab. This allows you to manually back up your saves. The main section of the screen will display current backups for your game. You can select a backup by clicking it in the list and then use the Restore Backup button to restore backup saves. Just be aware that restoring will remove your current saves, so do not do this by accident, that would be bad. Now there is a small checkbox at the bottom that toggles whether or not your current saves will be backed up before you restore your old saves. Also, if you want to delete an old backup, you can select it and then click the Delete Backup button. At the center of the bottom, you can type a name and then select the Backup Current Saves button to generate a new set of backup saves. At the bottom right, you will notice there are several checkboxes. These will cause the launcher to automatically back up your saves at certain set times. Now, I don't use these due to the significant amount of space that saves can occupy and because it's just not that important to me to preserve my characters. You can check whichever seems valuable to you and you can also mark the maximum number of automatic backups. Now, all of this is generally pretty straightforward and it's up to you how often, if at all, you want to use this section of the launcher. Let's move on to the next tab, which is labeled as mods. So this is a bit of a difficult thing to explain, so please bear with me for the next minute or so. For a long time, the launcher had a huge list of mods, most of which were broken and did not work. If you tried to install them, they would just not work and people were very frustrated by this. Very, very recently, as in within like the last two weeks of me recording this, the launcher's creator went through the list and removed many, many of the outdated mods. What that means is that if you're watching this right after I release the video, there's a pretty good chance that the mods you find in the launcher, they will actually work for once. Okay, but here's the problem. So historically, this list was very ignored and not kept up to date. It would not surprise me if in another three months or six months or two years or whatever, that this list will once again include many outdated mods. There's no way to look in the launcher and know if a mod will match up with your currently installed version of the game. So unless you know how Cataclysm mods work and you look into the files yourself, you probably will have no idea if something will work without trial and error. So if you want to install mods from the launcher, well, I'll talk you through how to use it. Just be aware that many of the mods you download, they're, they're in no way guaranteed to work and historically have been broken. Also, do not ask me questions about them. Every mod will be a little bit different and I'm not going to talk you through fixing something up. Anyway, with all that in mind, let's talk about this tab. Now on the left here, we can see mods that are currently installed in your game's directory. If you've just installed for the first time, some mods do come with the game and are generally those are the safest mods that you should try due to the fact that they're basically guaranteed to work. Now on the right side is a list of mods that the launcher has available to you. These come from a variety of places and again are very hit and miss on whether or not they will work with your version of the game. At the bottom you will also see additional information about whatever mod you click if that information is available. If you click a mod on the left you can select to disable or delete the mod by clicking the buttons below. If you select a mod on the right there will be an install button at the bottom and that allows you to install the mod to your game. 
It's very straightforward. Just remember that the mod will not magically appear in your game. You will have to add that mod to your world mods in world creation for you to be able to play with them. And again, just I keep I know I'm stressing it, but I have to. These mods are not guaranteed to work and I would advise you against installing them. But let's be honest, people are just going to ignore what I say and you're going to install a bunch of mods anyway. So you go ahead and do whatever you want. And that's all I've got to say about this tab. I don't recommend you use it, but whatever. Next, we have the Sound Packs tab. Now, unlike the Mods tab, as far as I know, everything in the Sound Pack tab should just work right out of the box without any real issues. So by default, Cataclysm doesn't have any sound except for some beeps when you move around, like in the game menus. If you want attack sounds, gunshots, things like that, you're going to have to install a Sound Pack. Now on the left, you can see a list of Sound Packs that you currently have installed, and on the right is a list of Sound Packs that the launcher offers you to download. You can click something on the right and then click install this sound pack to download. Just be aware that sound packs generally are pretty sizable things to download so it may take you quite a while if you have a bad internet connection. Also remember that once you download the sound pack you will not automatically have it enabled. You will have to go through your in-game setting menu and select that sound pack for it to work. Now I personally use the chest hole sound pack. It's really old and I really don't recommend it, but sometimes people ask because they watch my let's play videos. So I use chest hole if that's something you care about. The majority of the community that I talk to seems to use at sound pack or coag sound pack. Both of those are supposed to be very, very good. And those would be, I guess, the ones that I would recommend. Not much else to say about this tab. So let's just move on. And then finally here we have the settings tab. This shows a variety of settings for the launcher itself. Honestly, the default settings are perfectly fine. You can fiddle with them if you really want to. Most of them are very straightforward, self-explanatory. Now I would personally recommend checking the keep launcher opened after launching the game box. I think it's disabled by default, but I like keeping the launcher open once the game is open. This is mostly a, a convenience thing for me personally. It doesn't really have an impact on things. Do whatever you want, tweak settings as you see fit. And all right, hopefully that covers all the questions you might have had about the launcher. I can't really think of anything, uh, any other important information. So we're going to call things here. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this helped. And I'll be back with more Cataclysm Dark Days Ahead tutorial content in the near future.